States and wouldn't allow you to pass. The only reason why they graduated me is because they knew I was going into the military. <laughs> I've, I've found this out from my guidance counselor who <laughs> counseled me for four years since, uh, like recently within the past year, I found this out and I graduated oh. almost two decades ago. So, <laughs> so anyways, I, I fail. I, I basically fail out of high school, but don't, um, and then I decide rather than going into the military at that moment to try college. I then failed out of college with a cumulative GPA of 0.73. <laughs> How, however, I was the president of my dorm. You know? <laughs> uh, then I realized that I was wasting time and money and I enlisted into the army in 2004, the United States Army. At that time, our country, I actually, I believe Canada was involved in both conflicts as well. Uh, we were at war with Iraq and Afghanistan. And uh, very soon after enlisting, I ended up in Iraq. So I went in in 2004. I graduated boot camp in 2005, early 2005. And I was in Iraq by late 2005. Uh, I, I served with the 101st Airborne Division, which is uh, arguably one of the most prestigious divisions to ever walk the earth. Um, and uh, I ended up doing two tours in Iraq. Uh, I was wounded on my first tour in the United States. They give a, an award uh, that you don't die. It's called a Purple Heart. Uh, I came very close to dying on too many occasions to speak about, but one time was pretty significant. I was evacuated off the battlefield uh, in a helicopter. Um, anyways, uh, did, did, you know, at, at the, it was around that point that my whole perspective on life changed in 2006 and I was wounded. And, um, you know, I, I kind of like just was appreciating life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? I was like, oh man, I, I'm grateful I'm to alive. be here. You know, <laughs> so it changed my perspective on a lot of things. And I was still troubled. I was still angry. And that the military enlightened and enhanced that anger, given my job um, as an infantryman and as a grunt. And, you know, people trying to literally kill me on a daily basis. Like my, my, my anger and my aggression was, I was a weapon. Mm -hmm. you know, I was far beyond the, the average human. And, um, you know, I, on my second tour in Iraq, I watched the economy in the States collapse in 2008. Like we watched it on CNN. It was weird. We were like, what the hell is going on? Cause we're in Iraq. Right. And then I don't know if you remember the hurricane Katrina hit Louisiana and like wiped it out all in the same year. And we're watching this on TV and I'm like, Oh boy, I'm going to get out of the army. Like now after this <laughs> tour. And, and I got out, I got out into a recession and <clears throat> you know, I had the second lease on life. So I enrolled at community college and I started, um, I started studying like exercise science and nutrition and business and philosophy and history. And I was like all over the place. But one thing that I was really, really good at was my fitness. I've always not, I shouldn't say always, but for the better part of the past two decades, I've always been in like tip top shape. Um, I ironically post 2020 health has become a very big thing. I've always been healthy. Right. You know what I mean? Like I go to the doctor and I get a gold star. <laughs> so I started really excelling in exercise science and nutrition. And one of my first jobs outside of the army was, was becoming a personal trainer. And to make a long story short, um, I was forced into being an independent personal trainer because I was terminated from my purse, my first personal training job because my manager wanted to sleep with me and I didn't want to sleep with her. So I got fired. So I got fired. There you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got right into it. But, but I excelled. Right. And at that point in my life, I was going to school full time, double majoring. 
Um, I was personal training during the day. I was building my first business, which, which is still and have an online nutrition company. And I was bartending and bouncing on the weekend seven days a week for years. And I got really good at personal training and the online stuff with nutrition. So I decided like this was, you know, I was mid twenties at this point. I decided that I, my dream, my lifelong dream was to own a gym. So I worked, I worked and I worked and worked some more and made all sorts of mistakes and worked more. Um, started competing in the fitness industry. I did pretty good. No, nothing special. Made it to the national circuit. Um, and, uh, you know, that was my late 20s. In my late 20s, I got into grad school. I did business and MBA. And while I was in grad school, I opened my lifelong dream, a gym, uh, about 20,000 square feet. And it was like surreal. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm I, like... You know, that's eight years after I got out of the army, but I basically just worked my ass off until I achieved my lifelong dream. Mm -hmm. At that point, it was my lifelong dream. And I quickly realized I had no clue what I was doing. And I had like 40 employees. You know, prior to that, I had one company and I had a couple employees. So now I had two companies and dozens of employees. <laughs> and I was like, well, this is weird. Um, so that's, that's, you know, that's about the time that I really took a step back 2018. And I was like, I need some help and started like hiring mentors and coaches and so on and so forth. Yeah, I think it was no 2016, 2016. I apologize. 2016 is when this hell happened. And, um, you know, I, we were doing really, really, really well, uh, growing our EFT, uh, basically membership base, uh, growing the staff. We got up to about 60, um, I was winning awards locally. I, I was being asked to speak on local speaking circuits. And, th and that's, that's how my podcast came around in 2018 because, and that, that's how I basically got into coaching and mentoring because at that point, at 2018, I had the gym for two years. I was living my lifelong dream. I was making mid six figures. You know, I was getting close. I was starting to bridge towards the seven figure income mark, like net, not gross. And, um, you know, everybody was looking to me for answers, like with life, business, and, and I just didn't have the capacity to work with people one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one for free. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do a podcast. And uh, that was 2018. And I started like doing that type of like content. And uh, right around that time, um, I also started getting into real estate and watches. I started like selling my buddies watches because they were coming to me for help. So like all of these, all of these things just kind of around 2018 just started happening. Like these, mm -hmm. these side like businesses, if you will. And, um, you know, 2020 rolled around and, you know, I live in a very interesting part of the States, which is called new England. It's very um, liberal. <laughs> and, uh, and like, that's cool. Like, I have nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, like, when it came to 2020, like, our states were like, fuck you. <laughs> no one cares that you have a business shut down. And, I, and, and gyms are like restaurants. Like, you need people coming in. Like, you need mm -hmm. the customer to come through the door. So all this time and putting masks on and I'm like, no, I'm healthy. Like you, everybody trying to tell me what to do is vastly unhealthy in comparison to me. I'm, I'm not listening to you. Um, I mean, and that's just the truth, you know, like any, anybody, anybody that was giving this type of advice, anybody on television, in our government, I, I'm, I'm in where the one. Kinda, where did you kind of go a, with it? Like, what, what did I'm, you do at that point? But I think this is an important point, right? My health and my physical well being, just on the physical side of things, not just spiritually, which is a whole nother level, I'm in the 1% of the healthiest people living, right? Yeah, that's awesome. So, so but the, that's the point, though. 
these people were trying to tell me what to do with my health and what I couldn't, couldn't do with my business because of health. And I'm like, I own a fucking gym. Like, this is the answer, not this bullshit. <laughs> but I had no, right? So I explain that so people understand, like, proactive health will always be the answer. Always. Not reactive. Not, not a vaccine. Never. But that's not the point. No. Pro- proactivity is the point. And I had, I had all this time on my hands, right? I was like, all of a sudden, I didn't have 12 hours of my day taken up. Mm-hmm. So I was like, shit, what am I going to do? I'm going to write a book and I'm going to start working with people formally as a coach, like collecting money for it, even though I'd been doing it for years prior. Yeah. So like I I kind of emerged as like this local leader for people. I mean, people were scared and I was like, I'm not fucking scared. Don't, there's nothing to be scared of. And I'm going to tell you why. So did you at that time, Chris, did you like, was that when you kind of got out of the gym then at that point? Cause I'm actually not sure. And then went into the full time, like watches and coaching. Was that in 2020 then? Yeah. So, okay. So in, in 2019, I went all in, (laughs) I went all in with personal guarantees on loans, Okay, you know, six, seven figure type stuff. Yeah. And in 2020, when we were shut down, I was like, fuck, like, I don't know. I I don't know if what, how this will sound, but when you start bleeding 10,000 a month, 20,000 a month, 30, 40, 50, thousand dollars a month how long can you sustain that right without financial backers or partners or investors you can't right so what i did was i made the decision to sell and get rid of the gyms i was like you know what i foresee employment situations which plagued us in Mm -hmm. 2020 and 2021 and i foresee people being scared to come in here because of the narrative within our government and Mm -hmm. our media i said i'm gonna i'm gonna fold my cards and i'm gonna double the fuck down on everything else i do and i sold the gym i got rid of it i took a huge loss i mean we're talking multi seven figure loss and um i doubled down I doubled down. I mean, I quadrupled down, quadrupled down, um, uh, selling watches, that market, that industry was flying and coaching, uh, still had the nutrition company and just rebuilt my team over 2020 to where we are today. And, um, life is vastly different. Uh, this is year 14 for me as an entrepreneur, uh, this builds back for me has, I mean, it hasn't been easy, but it's incredibly faster and much easier. Um, you know, published my book. Um, now, now our watch, uh, the watch dealing business is, is international. I have a, a client that I met in Europe last month. I met him in Europe. He's, I'm meeting him Saturday in Vermont. So cool. He, fl- he, he flew in from Amsterdam to come pick up a watch that I that I got for him. Yeah, guys, if you want to watch, this is the guy. Check us out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're good watches. Yeah. I, I'm definitely a watch plug. That's for sure. Yeah, but the, for but, sure. But the but the thing is, like, and like what I want to accent on, and I'm not downplaying the plug. Thank you. Um, business. This business is so much like more fulfilling for me because watches are a passion for me and so is fitness but along the way of fitness being in extraordinary shape and i say that humbly because i've put 25 years of exercise and nutrition into my health Mm -hmm. i lost my passion for it and as a gym owner i was in the worst shape i'd been in in almost two decades i mean it wasn't bad shape it's still better than 90% of America, but for me, it wasn't that good. And Mm -hmm. I lost my passion a bit. And now here I am only, only focusing on myself when it comes to fitness. And I'm in, and I like love it again. 
and watches and teaching business and mindset and writing and speaking and like all of the stuff that comes along with being this type of entrepreneur. I love team building. It's so much more fun and it's so much more fulfilling. And you know what it fundamentally comes down to? One of my favorite authors is Napoleon Hill. And he always talks about purpose. And I really harnessed purpose probably around like 2019, 2020. And here we are several years later and it's purposeful. And the cool part is I've been writing about purpose and I've had my writing in front of um, big authors that understand this subject of purpose. Yeah. And their feedback on them is, is incredible. So what are some, can I, can I delve into that a little bit, Chris? Please. Yeah. What are some things that, you know, you wrote a book and, you know, it's to help people tell us without giving away, like, obviously all the deep secrets of the book, what are some things that people could expect to get out of your book toward finding the purpose? Because what I hear is, you know, you have this big vision, turned out your vision and your mission or whatever, not maybe your mission, but your vision of having a gym almost turned out to be a nightmare, which sometimes is what happens. Um, and lost a lot of money and not that money's everything, but lost a lot of stuff out of it. And, you know, it's interesting because I see that happen. People have a vision and we don't really know that. So in the book, do you kind of delve into some of that and tangible ways of, of how to, to find your vision, to find your purpose and, and where to go with it? Like, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you nailed it. Right. Um, you know, the hardest before I talk about the book, the the hardest part about the whole the vision of the gym and it turning into a nightmare, it wasn't losing millions of dollars, which is what happened. It wasn't that. Mm-mm. It was it was it was it was firing my team. Mm-hmm. I puked for a week straight. It was just so hard because I put so much time into building them. Um, that was the hardest part. It wasn't the years. It wasn't the time. It wasn't the money. It was the people. But leaders will understand that statement. (laughs) Um, And and if you're on that leadership journey, take care of your people. They'll take care of you. Now my team, my team, I mean, Jesus Christ, they're the most loyal. I have to punish them by taking work away. (laughs) I've never in my career experienced that. Like you need to stay home and no work. You need to focus on you because you have to handle your shit. And they're like, wait, what? And I'm, yeah, that's. You got us. Yeah, you got to look after you. Yeah. You're in timeout. <laughs> but anyways, uh, you know, the book fundamentally is a system. It's a system for all you business owners out there. It's a system for self-awareness. It's a system to find the awareness within you to understand what you're here for. It's a system to heal from trauma. And it's a system to save you time and money. And there's seven chapters in the book. And the book is a system of the seven biggest mistakes that I've made in my life that have cost me more time, more energy, and more money. But Fundamentally, more, more money, more energy, and more time than really needed to be. And this system is proactive to find the root causes of trauma, heal it, to find the self-awareness within you to understand purpose and to save you the time, energy, and money. That's awesome. It's called Dominate Your Day, correct? yeah dominate your day a high performer's guide to winning at life look at this handsome guy look at that look at that guy there we go and i believe you have it also on youtube and like for free like you can listen to it yeah parts of it it's on yeah it's on it the whole thing so that's awesome so So we're gonna post these links by the way in the the show notes for anyone looking for it we'll have them in the show notes so check it out (laughs) but go ahead the when i recorded the audio book myself which is a lot actually, of work. Actually, actually, is really difficult. <laughs> it is. I yeah, was like, oh, I'm a, I was like, I'm a podcaster for five years. This is going to be simple. No, <laughs> no. But 
Um, you know, I was talking to my team and I was like, yo guys, like, what can we do to like over deliver to the people that support us? And they're like, let's post the audio book on YouTube for free. Cool. I was like, yes, let's do that. So we did, we posted, we put before I even told anybody they could pay for the audio book. The, the audio book was on YouTube for free for a month. (laughs) Love it. And it's still, and it still is, you don't, you don't have to buy my book. You could go on YouTube for free and listen to it. However, there is audible, there is Kindle and there is paperback. Yeah. Paperback's the best. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. Same, same. So yeah, yeah. (laughs) Paperback's the best. That's so, um, that's so cool. And so if, you know, if, like you said, it's just kind of like, listen to your stories, um, what are some things that, like I said, it's just interesting how, and I see a lot of people have a vision and then they achieve it. They want like the white picket fence or they want the, you know, the yeah. wife, husband, three kids, two kids, five, I don't know, whatever their dream is. And yeah. then, and then they get it. And then there's, there's a moment where I see a lot of people, and I'm wondering if you went through this and how you would suggest handling it, where there's a moment where people get their their vision. And then it's not what it's cracked up to be. It's not the amazing dream. They actually thought it was going to be. Um, there's all the struggles, there's all the stuff, whatever their dream was, there's always struggles and there's always stuff. What is something like that got you in that point? And then a lot of times people just quit dreaming and you redreamed and built something else. So, you know, if you have someone that's like reached their vision, they've reached their, you know, whatever they thought it was. And then instead of giving up, you know, to, to repurpose themselves and to re find a new vision, Um, you know, I know I've had to do that. And I believe a lot of entrepreneurs have to do that because they make something happen. Or like I said, mayor, I don't care what it is, whatever your vision was, what's something that you would recommend, you know, as a coach, um, for someone that's like, wow, I got my vision, but it's not actually my vision to repurpose their life into something else. Excellent question. And I'm going to, I'm going to, this is the answer. It's natural and it will happen. Now, let me, let me explain why, okay? And I didn't know this until a couple of years ago, a few years ago. In, in Dominate Your Day, I write about how to build a vision for, for almost a whole chapter. In my second book that's coming out this year, Enlightened Entrepreneur, I answer this question specifically because it's the next level of vision, right? It's going, it's likely going to happen. Mm-hmm. You're good. Now, now it might not, it might not happen. And, and that's just as good as it happening. Cause one is no better than the other. However, if you have a growth mindset and if you're constantly studying and learning from all the different ways of doing so, and, and you want great impact or big impact to affect lives, to change lives, you're constantly evolving, constantly, daily. We just don't see it, right? Because we're so like caught up in our shit. But like, if you get to the vision, if you're that person, and if you get to that vision, first things first, most people don't, guys. (laughs) Most people don't. And the second thing is, it's natural if it's not what your legacy is going to be based around. Because you're beginning to think bigger, okay? If you begin to think bigger, okay, let's just put it into perspective. Let's say you're trying to be a millionaire, okay? Okay, awesome. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. And to be honest, it's not a very difficult thing to do. However, let's say you get there. What's the next step? Billionaire, okay? Now you gotta start thinking pretty fucking big. Right. And I'm just using numerical values. Mm -hmm. Right. Your mind is growing. You're you're putting all this knowledge in it. You're trying to get to the next level. You got to think bigger. Well, is the vehicle that you chose in this case, gyms, is that vehicle going to get you to the billions? Probably not. Now, the the, the numerical value has nothing to do with the vision. I'm just Mm -hmm. I'm just piecing it together to to. to, um watch right and track it's, it's just commas right it's just yeah. commas 
Yeah. You know, like, like planet fitness is, is, is in the billions, like LA fitness is in the billions, but those models are archaic and they're over, but that's not the point. The point is your vision is definitely going to change. And if you get to like your lifelong dream and realize it's not what you want, it's, it's okay to start over. How many examples in history do we have of people who started over in their forties, fifties, sixties, and seventies? and made whatever that they dreamed of for the rest of their life. Um, I mean, Oprah Winfrey, I mean, beast of an example, almost positive. She started over in her forties and became the first black female woman to be a billionaire. The owner of McDonald's was in his fifties. Colonel Sanders of KFC, K K KFC, I believe was in his late sixties. And those are just a couple of contexts. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very natural and it's probably going to happen and it's okay. Let's say your vision was the white picket fence and to have three kids and be married. And then you get there and you're like, holy shit, this is not what I want. Okay. Well, don't be destructive about leaving that vision. However, it's okay that that's not what you want. I mean, you got to take responsibility for yeah. whatever, whatever you've <laughs> like produced, yeah. but it's Okay. Who's to say that you can't do it again? Who's Good to business. say that you could do it single and mm -hmm. you want to be by yourself on a mountain somewhere, as long as you take care of the family that you put on this earth in some capacity. Mm -hmm. So what are some, um, what are some tangible tips that you would say for someone that's, you know, trying to get there? Like, what do you, someone's like, okay, you know what, Chris, this is awesome. This is great. You've done some amazing things. I, it's incredible. Um, I'm stuck where I'm at and I want to get unstuck. What are some times, like, give us an example of somewhere where you got stuck in your life and when, how you got unstuck and maybe people can take some tangible tips on how to get unstuck from where they're at. Yeah. Uh, I'll give two answers that are very pertinent and are very easy and very tangible. Okay. And, and then I'll give you the story. Okay. A audit your circle, audit who you're listening to audit who you're speaking to, audit who you put your energy into. Okay. Meaning, what are you taking in to your mind? Are you watching the news? Cut that shit out immediately. Your social medias, who are you listening to? Pay attention. Are you, mm -hmm. are you putting stupid shit into your mind? Because your diet is far beyond the food that you put in. Your mental diet is more important. Audit what you're listening to and who you're listening to. Social medias, news. I, I unfollow people left and right, you know? But that audit who you're listening to. Audit what you're putting into your minds. And then audit who you spend your time with, okay? If they're not progressive, you're stuck. If they're not progressive, if they're not doing well, if they're constantly complaining, if they're okay with average, is that what is going to help you get unstuck? Absolutely not. Now, you don't have to cut these people out of your life. You just stop putting so much time and energy into them. Associations. Yeah. Very association. Cute. Think about it. Right. Yeah. You and I met in May. Right. We both know the price point of how much it was per day to meet each other. Okay. You got to pay to play. I wanted to be around peers and I wanted to be around hitters that are above me. And yeah. I've built some fantastic connections from that, from that. It, look at us right now, right? Perfect example of it. Here we are talking about how to make impact, but fundamentally, surround yourself with people that are already where you want to be or are steadily getting there and levels above that levels above that. Right. I had never met Andy Frisella before motherfucker introduced himself to me. He's awesome. I mean, I, I didn't see, I mean, he very well have may have done it. I didn't see him do that with anybody else, you know? And I wanted to be around that level. I wanted to be around like shooting the shit with Ed Milet. I had never done it before. Normal dude. Just a normal fucking dude. Andy, normal dude. Just, you know, very um, 
animated <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> love them, love them. But the point yeah. is I wanted to be around that. There, there are so many levels above me or a level above or however you want to like mm-hmm. context it. You need to put yourself around people that are be. I'm not saying you, anyone listening, everybody, if you're stuck, put yourself around people, follow people, listen to people that are where you want to be or on their way or well beyond it. And no one else. Don't put that shit into your mind. It's good. I like that. Tangible, right? Yeah. Auditing, auditing your your associations will help you a lot. So, um, and there is a two, but if you want to interject, please. Yeah, no, go ahead. What was your second one? Knowledge, right? It's, it's almost like a subsect. What are you doing? What are you reading? What are you studying? Who are you learning from? It's that simple. If you're stuck, are you putting the proper knowledge into your mind? Are you reading? Mm-hmm. Are you... Are you taking e-courses? Are you taking classes? Are you continuing your education? Are you in a mastermind? Are you in a coaching group? Do you have a one-on-one coach? Right? You got to pay to play. That's what it comes down to. Everybody. Yeah. So get in some knowledge. And there's a lot of free knowledge. It's not about, you do have to pay to play, but there's also a lot of free stuff out there. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Study it, get involved with it, you know, up your associations. I love that. Um, in wrapping up, we have, I have few, three final questions that I always ask. And then anything sure. that you want to just leave the listeners with um, yeah. in final that we didn't touch on today that you think is really important. So three final questions. Yeah. Number one is someone is looking for their purpose. What is one sentence that you would say to help them find it? Learn how to meditate. Or how to meditate. I love it. Uh, you'll, you'll find it. Once you start connecting to your higher self and and like a higher power, which could be considered God, could be considered your higher self, the universe, it will come. It's exactly how it came for me. It's exactly how it's come for many people I know and almost all of my students. Meditate. I love it. Number two, and I'm sure you have more than one, but what one comes to mind? What's your favorite quote and why? Oh, geez. Uh, ch- oh God, there's so many, but um, <laughs> probably, probably g- given the context of this conversation, there's a Chinese proverb that I really, really, really like. Um, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. It's good. Makes sense. And yeah. number three, what's one word or sentence you want on your gravestone? Ooh, <laughs> the amount of lives that I've changed. My, my mission is to change humanity through the mindset. So if it could be the billions, let's fucking go. I love it. So awesome. And if you run into someone at a coffee shop and they're like, Hey, Chris, you know, I listened to that podcast. It was awesome. But you know, was there one more thing that you wish you could have told us? What would be that one thing that, you know, we didn't touch on today that you think would be really impactful for our listeners? Anybody listening. It doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair. It doesn't matter if your IQ is low. It doesn't matter. There is no circumstance. Stephen Hawkins, look what he did does not matter. It doesn't matter. It's all a script you have in your mind. I can't do this because I have PTSD. That was my script. I can't do this because I have 13 traumatic brain injuries. That was my script. I can't hear because I was wounded in Iraq and I lost my hearing. My hearing's back. Doesn't matter. Doesn't fucking matter. There is nothing outside of extreme examples. Anybody could do it. Anybody. It all starts with thought. It all starts with your thought, your script. You either choose to believe you can do whatever you want to do and set out to do, or you can choose to believe that you can't. Every single person that chooses to believe that they can't, if they tried to choose to believe that they could, they would get the glimmer of hope that they can continue to do it. If I could do it, you could do it. If you could do it, Angela, anybody could do it. True we could story. all do it. <laughs> True story. I love that. Now, use your thinking, change your life. Very, very cool. 
Thanks for being on. Listeners, as always, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, share all the stuff. We'll have all of the links uh, for Chris in the in the show notes. So check out his book, you know, buy his book, check out the free version, do whatever, get some of this stuff into you. It's good information to be able to change your life. So let's go out there and change one starfish or one life at a time. And together we can change the world. Thanks so much for being on, Chris. You got it. Make sure you review this show and spread it and share it and listen and Thank you for thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. Thanks, Chris.